Hello and welcome to Tektronics. Today we're going to talk about understanding the concepts of aliasing and how to detect and fix it using an MDO 4000 series oscilloscope. So as you can see, I'm using a signal generator to produce a sine waveform with frequency of 1 MHz and amplitude of 1 volt peak to peak. And this is important to note because when we look at our scope, we can see a very odd looking waveform, at least something that we wouldn't expect to see with this sort of frequency and voltage. And if we look at our measurements, we can see we have a frequency fluctuating between approximately 50 and 300 kilohertz, and an amplitude that seems to be approximately 50 millivolts. And this is a prime example of aliasing. Now, aliasing occurs when the oscilloscope does not sample the signal fast enough to construct an accurate waveform record. And this is because the scope interpolates data in between each sampling point. So you could imagine the fewer the sampling points, the greater the error due to interpolation. And when aliasing occurs, one of two things may happen. The oscilloscope can display a waveform with a frequency lower than the actual input waveform, or it will trigger and display an unstable waveform. To avoid aliasing, the Nyquist sampling theorem states that the sampling rate must exceed 2x samples per second, where x is the highest frequency of the original signal. And for this very reason, the oscilloscope maximum sample rates are typically at least 10 times the bandwidth in order to help reduce possibility of aliasing. And when you think about it, this theorem can be broken down into a very basic, intuitive, and easy to understand concept. So we have our actual high frequency waveform, and I feel four to five periods are sufficient enough for this example. But what if our scope is sampling at the same rate as the frequency? That is, we get only one sample per period. Well, in that case, we get this straight line waveform that looks like that of a direct current, which is what we saw earlier on our scope. Another example would be three samples per two periods, or a sampling rate one and a half times the frequency, which as you may remember is still too slow of a sampling rate. And as you could imagine, we get this new waveform of much lower frequency. Now if we sample the bare minimum two times the frequency, or two samples per period, we may construct more of a ramp or triangular waveform rather than our desirable sine waveform, but this is sufficient enough to achieve ballpark values. Note that our samples aren't necessarily taken at the peaks, so while our frequency may be close to accurate, our voltage could still be far from accurate. Recapping on what we've learned, it really makes sense why we need a sampling rate twice that of our frequency. For every period of our waveform, we have one peak and one trough, which gives us two critical points. So if we sample at this minimum rate, we can obtain a somewhat loose interpretation of our true waveform. And obviously, the higher our sampling rate, the more accurately our scope can construct a waveform. That's basic linear approximation. Now, there are a couple of ways to check for aliasing. We can perform a horizontal test using the horizontal knob to change the horizontal scale. If the shape of the waveform changes drastically like we see here, we may have aliasing. Or we could perform a peak detect test by selecting acquire, mode, then peak detect. Again, if the waveform changes drastically like we see here, we may have aliasing. To fix aliasing, we could scale in horizontally, Or we could select Acquire, Record Length, and use Multipurpose A to increase the record length. We could also use any combination of horizontal scaling and increasing of record length. The quick fix for aliasing is to select Auto Set, which will automatically set the vertical, horizontal, and trigger controls for a usable and stable waveform display. And you can see in the bottom left corner our measurements are almost exactly the desirable 1 MHz frequency and 1 volt amplitude. And if we were to perform our horizontal test, you can see there is no drastic change. Likewise, if we perform our peak detect test, we can see there is no drastic change. Thank you for watching our video. 
If you'd like to learn more information about our products, please visit www.tektronics.com support.